Hey everyone, before we dive right into the action, I wanted to let you know that I stream these things on Twitch and if you want to hang out with me while I'm live, you can follow the channel, will be the first link in the description. So we're getting the white pieces, gonna be trying out um, King's Indian attack and the opponent plays d5, just gonna be going for the Fianchero and we see a bit of an aggressive c5 move early on. Just gonna continue in normal fashion with short castle. We have an option to enter the Catalan with d4, but that's not really the goal of this series. So, for this reason, I'm just gonna stick with uh, simple moves, preparing to play knight e2 and breaking with the typical e4. So, gonna do exactly that. And uh, from the way my opponent is playing so far, we might actually be getting into super thematic positions if after e4 they castle short. I think that would be actually really nice to get. That's one of the sort of main tabias of the King's Indian attack after we get to push e5. So he goes to queen c7 trying to prevent me from uh, going e5. And I think I can just go rook e1 though. Idea to play e5 in the next move, just reinforcing that threat. And on h6, I think I can go for it because knight d7 will be met with um, queen e2. And this way we can make sure that Pawn on e5 is pretty safe. I think same happens on knight g4, just queen e2, and um, everything is well protected. So yeah, knight g4, I think it's kind of a typical mistake that uh, they're doing, because now big threat to play h3 and the g4 knight remains out of squares. So perhaps they are already forced to do something like f6, which is opening up the position with a king uh, stuck in the middle. I mean, not really stuck, but with the king in the center of the board is definitely not the best idea to open things up. So yeah, I think black already in a pretty tricky position. That's why they were supposed to do knight d7 here and perhaps leads to more of like typical stuff. Let's say queen e2, castle, we go knight f1, h4, bring the knight towards h2 and g4. That would have been uh, more typical, but instead we get this position and the opponent just goes bishop g5 and honestly I don't see how that will stop me from playing h3 and simply trapping the knight because bishop takes on d2 can simply be met by bishop takes and the knight remains out of squares so I'm just gonna go for that and as simple as that we manage to win a piece without doing anything special whatsoever. Just doing the fianchero, pushing e4, preparing e5, and then they're going for this um, super unnecessary knight g4 move that it's punished by h3 and the knight is literally trapped now. So we're gonna be winning a piece and from this point it's all about uh, trying to exchange all the pieces, get into an end game where we just win by default pretty much and uh, this is actually a pretty funny try saying that okay i lose the piece but i get uh, at least i get the open h file and that is sometimes like a pretty good idea but unfortunately for my opponent i don't think it's gonna be good enough and can just do like knight h2 take on g4 that's actually a pretty strong move that i overlooked but I think you can just uh, perhaps take on g4, take on g7, and then just knight g4, knight f6. Looks pretty crushing. He still has king e7, so doesn't look that obvious, even though I think bishop g5 in that position should lead to some kind of a mate. I could obviously go for the simple queen d1 move, and I think that's what you should normally play in general. No need to go for these uh, risky adventures, so we'll just uh, try to inspire you with this simple chess rather than going for the crazy line take on g7 and uh, okay that, that was also obviously a win but uh, i'm just saying you don't have to allow a fork when you're having the extra piece so we're ready to play c3 on the next move get rid of the annoying knight and then pawn from g4 is not running anywhere and this way opponent gets no active counterplay whatsoever so just gonna get rid of the knight Gonna be collecting next. I think knight c6 is like the only move because knight b5 <laughs> we can play a4 and uh, the knight is trapped once again. Would be funny to trap uh, both knights in uh, in a single game. So has to just go back 
and probably I'm gonna take with a queen on g4 because I'm attacking g7 even though going knight e6 knight takes on g4 is also perfectly doable I was just thinking maybe it would be better to bring the queen first so that we gain a tempo this way but honestly I might prefer taking with a knight because I'm not sure like we take let's say they're gonna long castle we take on g7 they can bring the rook we take one f7 so we basically take everything but the rooks are getting some uh, open files to work with so i think just easier keep everything under control take with a knight no need to rush for any queen attacks and now it's basically a matter of opening up the position so in that regard i'm considering the move b4 threatening bc5 and honestly i don't really think we should look for anything else so we have opposite castlings we're having the extra piece but the rule remains the same so we're basically supposed to go for the attack and that's what we do with b4 threatening to take on c5 also preparing b5 ideas and in case opponent takes we're gonna be taking back with a c opponent this way we manage to get the open file for the rook so after we get the open file b5 will be pretty huge threat and could potentially just uh, win the c6 knight so another move that i was considering for my opponent is exactly what he does which is c4 where i could honestly take once and he'll be recapturing and we have managed to open up the bishop but also his rook will potentially activate so i'm actually not sure we prefer to take in this case even though I said we need to open up the position. We would really like to open things up without, um, you know, also activating opponent's pieces. So for this reason, I'm like really inclined to do something like D4. Just uh, building up strong center, preparing to just uh, expand on the queen side with um, A4, A5 and sort of keeping everything uh, under control. So I think that's why I'm going to go for this move. And okay. It might actually not be so simple to break through on any side. Like we could obviously go like let's say 93 and the thematic break would be with um, f4 f5 in this structure. Even though that would be sort of weakening my king a bit in the process. So I'm definitely considering at some point to just run away with the king and use the h-file for the rook. But before we do that. I think it's really important to notice that uh, we have a piece which is not super active and that is the d2 bishop so it's not like terrible placed but it can definitely be improved and i think a better square would be on f4 and the bishop on f4 is really nicely placed because it's also preparing to meet f6 with pawn takes attacking the enemy queen and also it's just nicer there keeping also ideas for the queen to develop. He plays queen d8. My guess is that opponent could be preparing g5 ideas. So need to watch out for that because knight e3 would be a typical maneuver in the structure, but then that may allow g5 and bishop is potentially getting trapped. So in order to deal with that, I could play the simple queen d2 move and we're just stopping g5 idea. And if he really tries to get into it like this, could have gone like bishop g5 directly myself. So instead he plays knight e7, preparing to get it to f5, I would assume. Or maybe even to g6. So I think basically here we could start initiating some more trades. Like simply playing bishop g5, pinning my opponent and... When he unpins, I think he just uh, take the knight. And this way, we also manage to do something that's like really important for our game strategy when we're having the extra piece. We're trading. And now the next step would be to, I would say, trade the, the rooks on the h file. So we could either play bishop f3, king g2, and then rook h1, and swap everything on the a file. Or could also go king f1, king e2, and then do that. Could also play f4, king f2, and then go rook h1, 
I think I like the F4 plan best just because it's um, less time consuming and it's also improving the situation in the center quite a bit. And yeah, I think can just play King F2 next, bring the rook over to H1. And the plan would be to trade everything. Opponent tries to activate the bishop, which is pretty good idea, understandable. But it's not really going to help since he's down too much material at this point. So simple plan. Gonna go rook h1 and uh, just trade everything in case he avoids the trade. We always get the outpost on h7, so it's not really a choice for my opponent. I mean, it is, but it's not a good choice. So, could go rook h1. I guess he wants g5, but uh, that would actually weaken the f6 square. So, I think after we get the knight to f6, it uh, should be definitely a step into the right direction. So, could take immediately, but then he can simply recapture, perhaps recapture with a rook, even better. So for this reason, I think it's pretty good to just throw this move in, attacking the rook, and on rook g7, could simply collect the pawn, since with knight f6, we have managed to cut the connection between uh, queen and pawn. So we can simply collect it next, and we managed to win a pawn in the process, and also sort of paralyze all of Black's pieces with this uh, powerful knight on f6. So rook g6. Just gonna take as I said. And we're controlling the only open file, which is pretty nice. Next move would be rook h7. So opponent just playing b5. Okay, we don't really mind that. Just gonna continue activating and gonna pursue with the same strategy. Double up the rooks, play rook h8, prepare trades, I can trade the rooks, then I can bring the queen over and trade queens as well if allowed. And on knight g8, obviously, I mean, on rook g8, obviously, we're going to be collecting. So, we are up a full rook now. And going to bring the last piece, threatening rook g8. Exchanging another pair of rooks. So, opponent takes on g5, which is really understandable. And just need to watch out for something like, let's say, queen f4, rook f5, which would be trapping my queen. But I think we can just simply start blackmailing him with a trade. Just go like rook h5. Inviting the trade and avoid rook f5 ideas. So he has to go with the rook either on uh, g6 or to g4. If they go to g8, we're happy because you can just trade the rook, obviously. And against this, I'm like really considering to play this move and try to be annoying. But I think maybe simplest is in fact just to go queen f4 and with this move we're just applying pressure on the f7 square and to me it actually looks like uh, we're gonna be winning this pawn so i think after we win the f7 pawn it's just gonna be sort of an easy way towards my opponent's king and should um, yeah pretty much be an effortless win especially because he locked his bishop outside the game he, like generally you could activate it like this in the french but okay here it's definitely a bit of a different scenario when <laughs> you are down a piece. So opponent simply uh, presses the resign button and we manage to get this one in. Thanks a lot for making it this far into the video. And in case you're looking for more episodes from the same series, make sure to click one of the videos that will appear on the screen. So with that being said, I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll see you around on the channel. Take care.